Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. This is the new uh, Hollyland um, Mars M1 Enhanced. Uh, they sent me this for review, and I'm not being paid by Hollyland, but they did send me this monitor to keep. And um, so far, it's really good. And I'll give you some reasons why I like it over my old system here. Um, with my old system, you know, I had to have the the monitor mounted, powered, HDMI, and then I had to have a, you know, the trans transceiver um, powered and then HDMI. So it quickly gets kind of messy with all the cables and all the different power options. Luckily with this monitor that I'm using, it does have a dummy NPF battery on the back. So this is nice, but if you were using a more traditional monitor, one that didn't have that option, like say this one here, this uh, five inch Shinobi, you would have to mount this on your camera and then you have to mount the wireless system somewhere else on the monitor. So, you know, you would have to put it in another location. Some people put it on the side. I've seen it on the back, up here, just wherever you can. And then, you know, you have to power it you have to run an HDMI from the monitor to the receiver. So it gets really messy pretty quick. And that's one thing that I appreciate about this monitor is because it is built in, I only have to run one HDMI and one power to the monitor itself. So it's a much cleaner setup than my, my previous rig. And you know, you could cable manage this a little bit better. Um, I didn't really do a good job with this. I just don't know how to get such a small HDMI cable from there to there. Um, so, you know, you could clean this up a bit and it would be totally usable. I mean, I've used it many times on different shoots or whatnot, and it's fine. I'm just always looking for products um, that make my life a little bit easier and it's um, more streamlined. I don't have to worry about, you know, as many cables, as many power cables or HDMI or whatever. This is just a nice clean setup. And then this um, signal works with these Hollyland uh, Mars 4K uh, systems. So I have one right now going from this camera to this monitor here. This is a 15 inch OC production monitor. And it's just being, it's just attached onto the back of the monitor here. And then it's going from uh, the power source is from the gold mount that's powering the receiver, powering the monitor, and then SDI to SDI. I try to use SDI whenever I can. Um, even though this does have HDMI and this does have HDMI, I like the SDI connections better. So if I have them, I'm, I'm probably going to use it. And then it just connects to the, the um, production monitor that way. Um, and there's not too much delay slight delay but most of these systems do have a slight delay on them so you have to you know it's not i'm not doing this for anything super critical this is mostly just to give a feed to a director or a producer or whoever needs to see signal um that's what this is intended for i probably won't have someone pulling focus for me or anything like that um but yeah, so I really like the problem it's solving for me. Just having a cleaner rig. I mean, this thing is already pretty beastly for like an FX3. Having, you know, two gold mount batteries, monitor, the original handle, matte box, lens. And then I have a VTC plate set up here. So this is a, a big setup. Um, but... This is making my life a little bit easier, just not having to worry about a mess of cables everywhere. Um, so, yeah, I'm really digging this monitor so far. Obviously, once I use it a bunch, I'll, I'll do a video update and give you guys kind of my, um, you know, after six months or after a year of using it, what I think about it. But just my initial thoughts, it's, it's amazing. I love the, the technology, how it's all built into one. And you could have, you know, a uh, two of these monitors, and you could have a smaller 5-inch director's monitor for, you know, if you're running gun 
if you're if you have this on a gimbal and you want to be really mobile and your producer's following you around and you don't want them to look over your shoulder or mess up your gimbal shot you could have this you know going to another five inch uh m1 monitor and then um you know you could put handles on it or whatever so they can carry it around but that would be a pretty uh slick run and gun setup what would be really cool is if hollyland maybe i'll send them an email and see if they can put this into the works but if they came out with their own version of a 15 inch monitor and same thing like this but just 15 inches that would solve the problem of having to mount you know all this stuff together it'd be nice just to put one monitor on a stand gold mount battery and then it just connects you don't have to do anything another step or whatever it just it just works that would be pretty slick um if they did something like that so i might send them an email and you know see if that could happen at some point in the future because i would be the first one to probably buy it um and yeah the price point on this guy is really good it's 500 bucks i mean i've used a ton of different monitors and i still use all these monitors um none of them just sit um but for, you know, 500 bucks. But yeah, even if you weren't going to use it for the wireless, you know, feature, I would still use this as just a regular 5-inch monitor. They're, they have all the features built in. You can add your own LUTs. You can um, have focus peaking. Like, all the traditional things that you would want on a monitor, you can have on here. The only thing it doesn't have, obviously, if you're looking for, like, a recorder, like the Atomo stuff, you can't record you know, onto a hard drive or anything like that. This is strictly just a monitor and wireless uh, transmission system. But, um, yeah, so far it's really good. And I've used a ton of monitors, so I can confirm, you know, the quality of this thing is, is great. It's definitely up to par. I do like that it's bright. It's a thousand nits. So, you know, some of these other monitors, this is like 300 nits. This one is like 500 nits, like 700 and maybe another thousand. But this unit, you know, when I paid for this, this was almost like 1500 bucks. And this did come out a long time ago. Um, but these ones are really loud, you know, obviously because they're recorders, but they just make a ton of noise. Even my old unit, this is 2000 nits. So it's really bright, daylight viewable, but it's loud. And there's no way to really control the fan. So this this guy makes a ton of noise um, compared to this. I can't even hear any sort of fan going off. Even when I put my, my uh, head right next to it, it's really quiet. And, you know, that might change if we're outside and it gets really hot. Fan might kick on, but... Just first impressions, it's not making any noise, um, which is great. Because I've been in a couple of scenarios with this system, and I'm in a small, quiet room, and I'm like, what is that fan noise? It's always, you know, it's always this guy, the monitor, and then these um, little units here are kind of noisy as well. Not so much these ones, but these ones are, are pretty noisy. Um... So combination, you know, of the monitor and the, the wireless stuff, it just makes a lot of noise. So if you're in a small room and you have a boom mic, you might pick it up with something like that. But this one, um, I don't think it would be an issue. Uh, in the box, it came with um, a screen protector, which is always nice. It had, it was one of those glass enforced screen protectors. So... I'm not too worried about this guy uh, getting damaged or whatnot. Um, just like, you know, how, how you have it with the phone, and if you drop it, the screen uh, is probably going to be okay. And then it came with a um, DTAP to uh, DCI uh, cable. This is a locking cable, too, which is really nice. So, and it's pretty long. I had to run it all the way under up here. So there's a good amount of length for it. Um, so that was nice that they included that because um, sometimes you have to buy these things and they're like 30, 40 bucks. Um, so came with those two things and I have to check. It might have come with another one of these guys just in 
case you you twist one off and lose it. But I think you can buy them on their website, and they're pretty cheap too, just in case you do lose them. But yeah, I definitely like those antennas and these antennas, the little bullet style, as opposed to these longer connectors. Um, I haven't noticed any sacrifice in range with these smaller things, so that's good. And typically I can keep them on here because it's still a pretty small profile. As opposed to these, you know, I have to take them off every time so that they don't break when I pack them up. Um, so that's another thing that saves you a little bit of time not having to attach antennas. But yeah, this was just kind of a quick video um, showing you guys this new monitor. But yeah, I'll put a, a link in the description below. Feel free if you want to uh, purchase it or check it out. I'll put it there so, so you guys can have it. And then I'll show you guys my new van setup once this rain clears out. So I ordered these um, slick locks that will, they're like a, a puck style lock that I'm gonna put on each one of my doors to the back. So there's gonna be one that goes here, one that goes on the very back and then on the other side. So I have a couple of shoots booked this year um, in different areas of the country. And I wanna, I know these aren't perfect and you can still cut through them and all that, but I'm just trying to make my van as secure as possible. So I have a little dash cam, and then I have an alarm system, and then I have this. So hopefully between the three, it somewhat will keep my van somewhat safe. I think I have a shoot in Atlanta coming up pretty shortly. So I want to make sure none of my stuff gets stolen. Um, lots of like inner city work. So yeah, I'm going to get these guys installed and then I'll keep you posted. Slick locks have been installed. These are just puck style locks. They twist to reveal a little keyhole. And then you can have a set of keys. Like this one here. And it just comes off. Sorry, it's hard to do with one hand. couldn't do it with one hand then the lock comes off and then you can open the door like normal that stays in there and then there's the, the new install just using the same uh, screws that came with uh, the van so that's why I like the system because I didn't have to drill into the van that always kind of freaks me out and then just make sure it's good push it in turn the key now it's on there now you can't open physically open the door with that lock being right there so i have that one Without showing my license plate, and got one on the back door here, and then one on driver's side. So that's kind of nice. And I know this isn't super secure. If someone really wanted to get in here, they could still, you know, cut through that. Or there's a little bit of give, they could probably put something in there and cut the lock. But, you know, that would still take some effort and a lot of noise. But hopefully, you know, they would get spooked or something if a car drove by and they had power tools out or whatnot. So this is kind of just a an extra step to keep the van secure when I'm in like a downtown area. But yeah. Pretty simple install, probably took maybe 30 minutes and I didn't have to drill into my van, so 
so far I really like slick locks um, I'll obviously keep you guys updated as I use them more but yeah good solution also another reason why I think it's a good idea to have locks is for insurance purposes so for insurance obviously premiums uh, might be a little bit less if you have more security measures which is nice and then also let's say you do get your van broken into it's easier to claim um, on the police report that a lock was broken as opposed to I don't have windows on here so I have windows on here and obviously if they smash the window then that's that's a given that's easy to prove for insurances but if somehow they get into your car without breaking a window then your chances of getting uh, insurance money goes down quite a bit because on the police report it looks like nothing really happened besides someone supposedly stole something out of your car but on this case if a lock is cut then at least you have that on the uh, police report and it's better for insurance purposes as well because uh, I mean it's so easy for people to get in cars without breaking windows now um, I follow a guy on uh, YouTube or Instagram and he has these little suction things that that um, pretty much balloon out push the door out that has about an inch and then he could just drop down and pull the lock um, or the handle so they don't necessarily have to break a window but yeah it would be hard to prove for the insurance company if you didn't have any break-in signs, you know, if there's not a smashed window or a cut lock or anything like that, then it would be hard to prove that you actually had your stuff stolen. So that's kind of another reason why I think it's a good idea to have locks on the van. It's cold Thursday morning. And this is what my shop looks like. I had to unload my van um, during Christmas just to move around some stuff. So that's what all this stuff is right here. It's pretty much for my van. But everything else usually stays in the shop. But it's just been a busy uh, season. So I haven't really been able to get things organized but I have a few rentals going out today that I'm trying to prep for um, I have a 600x package going out with a, a frame um, sorry not a frame a t-bar solution and some some fabric um, unbleached muslin 8x8 I have that being picked up today. I also have an FX3 out and then an audio package. So I'm trying to run inventory right now on the stuff that's going out. But yeah, it's been a pretty slow January for me. Um, I had to say no to a few uh, jobs because I was still on vacation till the 8th. And then um, I haven't really had any productions line up or any shoots um, after that. I think I have one at the end of the month in January, but not a whole lot in between now and then. Um, and then I have some in February. So things, things start to pick up in February for me, it looks like. Um, but yeah, I haven't had a ton of shoots, but I've had a lot of uh, rentals, which has been nice to help supplement um, some income and whatnot. Uh, I have a, a couple of different things out right now. Uh, a couple, uh, I have an FX3 package and then an, an audio package and a couple of like little miscellaneous items like that. And then the, the Aperture 600X uh, thing is going out today. Uh, someone's picking that up. So yeah, things are moving. Hopefully it'll give me a little bit of time to uh, start organizing gear and getting ready for a busy season. 
I know my shop is pretty messy, so it'd be nice to get this all organized um, before things get hectic. So I'll be working on this slowly for a few days um, in between some other stuff that I'm doing. So this is kind of like a back burner project, but um, I'll try and spend an hour or so each day trying to get things uh, cleaned up. But yeah, I'll keep you guys posted as we go.